Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope we're all well and thank you very much for tuning in. There is a fantastic update to FSLTL on the horizon. So in this video, I'm gonna run through all the changes and new features in this update. This update comprises some tweaks and changes to the way the injector works based on your feedback, along with the implementation of some new features that I'm personally a massive fan of. We're also working on some updates to the models and repaints that, whilst not a part of this update, you can see some of them throughout this video. There is no date fixed for this update as yet, but we are currently testing a build that is close to release candidate and working quite well. So keep an eye on the FSLTL Discord for the official release date. If you're not familiar with FSLTL, you can check out my introduction and installation tutorial video by clicking on the pop-up in the top right of the video now. And just a quick warning for anyone trying out the Sim Update 11 beta. Currently, there are a number of issues when running FSLTL in this version of Microsoft Flight Simulator, so I'd recommend steering clear for now if you like to run the FSLTL injector frequently. We are awaiting some fixes and comments from Asobo to get things in a better state in preparation for this sim update. All right, so without further ado, let's get right into it. So first up, and one of the biggest changes we have in this update is with regards to active IFR aircraft logic in the injector. Active IFR traffic is now inserted into the sim on the ground, airborne or both, based on your current aircraft altitude. This helps with more arrivals being injected at a lower IFR count, along with more traffic in the cruise. Do note there is still a rather strange sim limitation whereby if FSLTL injects an aircraft within a certain radius of its destination, unfortunately the sim will teleport this aircraft to a gate which is something we cannot do anything about currently. So this change works as follows. So when your aircraft is on the ground, the injector will insert new active IFR traffic up to your specified count proportioned into 50% traffic in the air and 50% on the ground. When your aircraft is above 10,000 feet or flight level 100, traffic is inserted 75% in the air and 25% on the ground. And then finally, when your aircraft is above 20,000 feet or flight level 200, all inserted active IFR traffic will be airborne. The injector will also reduce the removal radius of other IFR traffic behind your aircraft to promote the insertion of more traffic in front of you while you're in the cruise. Do bear in mind though that static aircraft will still display at airports no matter your altitude. Next up we have some big changes to the in-sim toolbar for the injector. You're now able to change some of the injector options on the fly using these new slider options. These options will update the injector in real time and your changes will persist to your injector config. Meaning if you change your options here, even if you close or restart the injector, the same settings will be applied when starting back up. Do note that if you are reducing your static aircraft count, the injector doesn't remove statics it's already placed. So you will need to restart the injection for this to take effect. Further, you will need to have your FSLTL injector package within your community folder in order to see the toolbar option and thus these sliders. Another new option we added for the injector was independent control of showing blank liveries or the Asobo generic models. So upon starting the injector, if you choose to change your settings, you can toggle either of these on or off to your liking. A rework has been made on the injector's model matching logic. So if you have any other AI traffic packages installed such as AIG, this should improve the results. The ordering is now as follows. So first the injector will look for the correct aircraft livery and model from the FSLTL package. Then if no match 
is found, it will look in any other AI traffic package you have installed. And then finally, if no match is found, it will choose a blank or generic model depending on what you have set in your injector config. So essentially this will improve the injector's model matching capability in cases where it was choosing a generic or blank livery where it could have chosen a matching livery from a different package. A notable bug was fixed whereby sometimes static aircraft could get reinserted on top of each other at some airports. An option has been added to the injector config file that allows a max limit to static aircraft insertions. Now this is a hard limit to the number of statics that will appear versus the slider based system you can set through the injector. This might be useful if you fly into a mixture of smaller and larger airports and you want to cap the number of statics that appear at larger airports for example where there can be drastically a large amount more statics than at a smaller airport. In most use cases this won't need to be changed but if you'd like to have a play around with this, you can do so by browsing in Windows Explorer to the Injector Configuration folder, as noted in the third line shown in the Injector console. You can copy this path from the console by highlighting the path and using Ctrl and C on your keyboard, and then paste this into the address bar in Windows Explorer. Then open up the fsltl-trafficinjector-config.json file from within this folder in Notepad or another text editor and you'll find the option there. Make sure you restart the injector if you make any changes here. A small fix was made for FS HUD users that now deletes aircraft outside of the radius range set for Flight Radar 24. The injector will also now inform you if you have an issue with your config file which was previously causing the injector to hang and making it difficult to troubleshoot the problem. The injector is also now using the ICAO flight number allocation so you should now hear the proper call signs being used especially in Europe over the radios by air traffic control. And this is most notable for airlines using alphanumerics in the call signs such as Ryanair 6 Foxtrot X-Ray for example. Among these changes, a few other minor tweaks and fixes have been made to improve the user experience. And that just about wraps up the changelog for this upcoming update. Short but pretty sweet, I think you might agree. Thank you all for the overwhelmingly positive response to this add-on so far. We've been absolutely blown away by the reaction from the community and are super, super proud to have reached over 40,000 downloads so far. We will continue to work on improving the experience for you guys along with adding to the model library as time goes on. If you have any questions about FSLTL, you can check out my Q&A video by clicking the pop-up in the top right of the video now. Or feel free to head over to the FSLTL website, a link to which is in the video description below. Or you can click in the top right as well. I do also live stream Microsoft Flight Simulator every week, so feel free to join me in the chat where I'm happy to answer any questions you may have live on stream. If you've enjoyed this video, please do hit the thumbs up button. And if you are new to the channel, do consider subscribing for more FSLTL updates, live streams, and Microsoft Flight Simulator content. A big shout out to all of my channel members. Thank you very much for your continued support. I hope you have all enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye for now.